Hello and welcome back. It's Remembrance Sunday, so I think what I've got for you today is quite appropriate. Uh, I'm doing a review of the M3 Lee, one of the most important tanks of the Second World War. I say one of the most, because in my opinion T-34 was the most important tank, though the Sherman does come pretty close second. Now the M3 Lee is important for a very different reason. It wasn't a tank that carried the Allies through to victory. It was a tank that allowed the Allies to hold them long enough to bail the tanks that it needed to get its ultimate victory. Now, the M3 Lee was started in 1940. The Americans realized after the Battle of France that they needed a tank with a 75mm gun due to German success. So they began creating a tank that would eventually become the M4 Sherman, but in the meantime they need an intermediary design. Now this is where the Lee came in. It was armed with either an M5 or M6 37mm gun, like the ones you get on the Stuarts, in a turret, and a sponsor mounted M2 or M3 75mm. Now the British ordered just over three and a half thousand of these vehicles but they ordered a version with a different turret it was a much larger turret if I remember correctly but a lot lower reducing one of the main problems the Lee had which was its high silhouette now this version of the Lee was named the Grant by the British and served as a very effective vehicle in the early North Africa well the late North Africa campaign just before Alamein. Uh, these tanks arrived in North Africa and the British used them to great effect shortly before the Battle of Alamein to halt the German advance. The Germans got a big surprise when the lead turned up as it found that the 75mm gun they carried could engage the Germans from a much longer range than the 5cm anti-tank guns that the Germans were using on their Panzer 3s. Uh, needless to say, this was one of the factors that led to the contributing factors led to the upgunning of the Panzer IV to a long barrel 25. Now, the Lee had several major design flaws. The riveting was one of them. It meant that the inside rivets would pop out and bounce around the tank when hit. Another problem was its tall silhouette, obviously making it an easy target. It had subpar off-road performance and this archaic right sponsor mounted gun which unusually can actually aim further to the left than it can to the right meaning that if you're driving a Lee you always want to turn left if you can however for its time the armor was pretty good it had a decent number of machine guns with which to fight back and the slow velocity 75 was a very good gun for its time. The Lee served in Africa, and once the M4 Stuart had been, the M4 Sherman, correct myself, had been assigned to the theatre in significant numbers, these Lees were, and Grants, because the British received both, were sent off to the Pacific, where they served with an extreme distinction of supporting infantry against the Japanese. Japanese armour was weak enough that the 37mm gun was an adequate anti-tank weapon and the 75 could be used as an infantry support weapon against fortifications. Despite the poor performance of the Lee off-road, it served as a very effective tank. Now, the Americans did use the Lee in combat in North Africa, primarily because the Shermans from the American tank division had been given to the British for El Main. Yeah, <laughs> that happened. Uh, the Russians also received some leads and they didn't like them. They already had the T-34 which was a superior tank by far. Uh, the leads only really performed well on the Russian front when they were engaged with captured French light tanks. Ah. Yeah, that's what happened. But anyway, uh, carrying on to the Lee. This is, of course, in IDEF. We're going to see the Grant in 9.5 or 9.6, which will have a different turret. 
which is lower than the Lee's turret. Now, I love the Lee. It's the first tier 4 medium tanker I played. I'll admit it. I love this tank to bits. <laughs> yeah. It's not an easy tank to drive, but I love it to bits. No matter. Lee is notorious for having a bad aim. In well, the tanks and. They're not wrong. 0.41 dispersion on its gun. Blech. But there's 20 rounds a minute. <laughs> the Lee's gun is very fast firing. You can pin things down quite easily and tear them to shreds. The Lee is a very good tank at its tier. Look at that whole armor 50mm frontal armor. And sloped? Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sloped. And Lee does have weak spots, but I'll go over those in Tank Inspector. Lee is a good tank. It's a good tank, but it's outclassed by other tanks at its tier, and it's a very difficult tank to drive due to this high silhouette. This high silhouette does have the advantage of allowing it to look over obstacles, but combined with the fact that it's got a low gun, uh, it's not so good. The Grant is going to have a slight advantage there, because the turret's smaller and it has a lower profile. They're also talking about giving it the proposed British six pounder gun as an alternative top gun for the Grant. I'm not sure on it, but hey, I've seen pictures of a Sherman turret being mounted on a Grant as a test bed. Not sure how that worked out, or even if the picture's correct or just some sort of dummy. But I will say this, there are a couple of vehicles in the American Tech Tree that are based on the Grand, and it's this one, and this one. That's right, the M12 155mm howitzer, and the M7 Priest. The Australians also came up with a 25 pound artillery piece, and 1949 based on the Lee chassis, but I'm not really going to go to that. There is, however, another tank based on the Lee, and that's this T-40 tank destroyer. Never actually entered service. Still, I enjoyed driving the T-40. A Lee with an M1A1 gun? Now, that would have been very interesting, but hey. Never proposed, never going to see it. Sad face. But anyway, that make an interesting tier 5 premium. No doubt. Now let's go into the research path for the Lee. What's that doing? Okay, you should have the second radio. Yeah, you should have the second radio, but not the top. Don't think. Okay, you could have the top radio if you were willing to grind out the 9, the 5600 XP it requires on the M2, or you've ground it from somewhere else. Uh, top engine, it's only other seen on T40. You can pretty much mount the top gun straight off once you've researched it. See, it's a superior weapon to its predecessor. It's got a slight advantage in its arm penetration. It's better in its dispersion. Its aim time is worse, surprisingly enough, but not by much, and it's got a better rate of fire. Really is just a better gun. Top radio is your standard American radio, pretty much, you see on most tier four to six tanks on the American line. So you first put cores researching this gun, then your tracks, you then take your engine, and then if you haven't already, your top radio. That's my advice. And then you research these two. I originally drove this vehicle when I was starting, and its only competition was the T28 and the M and the Panzer III at tier four. 
I went down this line because I wanted the M4 Sherman. <laughs> so I regrettably, well not so regrettably now because I'm bringing you a review, skip the T1 which I'm currently grinding for. Alright, so as you can see the Elite has 310 hit points which is pretty good. This is power to weight ratio. Not specific power. 15.6. It's alright. I find the Lee traverses and moves fairly fast, surprisingly. I don't think it's a sluggish machine. As for equipment, gun rammer, obviously. I would advise pre ventilation again because it's always good. And for your third equipment piece, well, coated optics wouldn't go amiss. It's only got 320 meter view range. But on saying that, that gun lane drive wouldn't go amiss either. But it's your choice really on your third piece equipment. Skill wise, Brothers in arms, repair, then whatever you wanted for your third skill, really. But, uh, I'm just going to swap over to Tank Inspector and show you the armor layout. Okay, I'm now in Tank Inspector and I can show you the armor layout for the tank. This whole area here is 51 millimeters thick. It's quite nicely sloped. If you look at what on the top of the hull, you're getting 55-ish. You're getting up to 60 around here. Places. 70s. Aiming for the lower front of the lee is... Even the top of the lee isn't a particularly good idea, especially if aiming for there. The sort of army you're getting around here. Ink for this side of the sponsor is not a good idea. The gun's just got a 51mm plate in front of it. Not particularly good. You've then got this 38mm plate, which is roughly 50 in its own right. You can see it covers most of the sides, top of the turret. The turret itself is 51. The top deck is 13, you've got 19mm plate there. A short 25mm plate there, and you got tens around the ear. So, at 13 at the rear, 20mm spaced armor from the tracks and gun. So, fairly homogeneous armor, really. The only real weak spots are the gun mantle, surprisingly, and this small upper plate here. Are the only real weak spots you have. There's just uh, it's a place to shoot really, rather than a weak spot. Now if we flip into the combinations, as you can see, the Lee has a better than average gun on a tier four medium. In terms of pretty much everything, ammunition's damn, but it's a seventy-five millimeter gun for heaven's sake. Shell velocity is down, but then again, most tanks at this tier are using 50, 57 millimeter guns. Maneuverability wise, the lead does have poor off road performance. But its gun handling is. Ugh, okay. It's fairly good on the move and when traversing. Aim time is good, but uh, 20 degrees elevation, not fantastic, and 9 degrees depression, okay that's alright, but um, you can be better, especially considering the location of the gun, it doesn't really help you that much. Traverse speed's not particularly fantastic, but yeah, really doesn't impact you too much in my opinion. The mobility, well, specific power is bad. 
it's only capable of 38 kilometers per hour going forward and 16 back it's not particularly fast but it doesn't feel slow it's got decent hard and medium terrain to resistance but it loses out in terms of soft terrain it does pivot which is an advantage and it can stop quite fast survivability its modules have decent health track and uh, the optics are a bit weak but the armor is good for its tier it's it's not badly armored it's just guns you go up against tend to be capable of penetrating you it's got not particularly fantastic health for its tier but hey it's not a good scout obviously and yeah now if we were to compare this to let's see what's uh, the other favorite Informer Tilda. See, Matilda's fairly similar, but it's a lot more survival, a lot slower, and it's got worse gun characteristics. Matilda. Uh, we'll have a look at its uh, competitors from back when I was first playing. It's slightly better than the T28 with Top Gun in terms of damage it can deal. It's got arm par or slightly better handling of its gun, with the exception of accuracy. <laughs> Mobility wise, it's not as mobile as the T28, but it's a heck of a lot more survivable. If we look at the other one, which it was frequently against a lot better than the Panzer 3 in terms of firepower but the Panzer 3 had a lot more mobility <laughs> and driving around with that derp was uh, rather fun okay so I'm going to switch to the matches now so if you give me a sec okay okay so this is a tearful match and as you can see there's not really any of the other tier 4 mediums on the enemy tank there's a couple of Matildas, T28 and M3 but it's mostly light or medium tanks from a lower tier there's a B1, but the B1 is, well, not particularly good. And our team's a bit of a hodgepodge as well. So I go up this hill. I'm going to have to find a better recording system. Mm. So if anyone knows any better three recording players than uh, open broadcast systems, well, let me know because for some reason World of Tanks no longer allows game capture with OBS. Number three. I'm coming along with this ridge. Consider using that overlook, but decide not to. We'll continue advancing. We haven't seen the enemy yet. So I keep moving up to use this opening here. So I'm going to gun up. Have a look around. I can't see anything, so I edge a bit forwards. Okay, I need to edge a bit forwards. 
Let's zoom in on where he's going to appear. Let my gun aim. Penetration. Put around in, hit the BT-7, who's hit by someone and his like, ammo explodes. Turret doesn't go flying though, for some reason. Keep on this line, waiting for him to appear. I get hit by something. Probably the Kimi, but uh, the Stuart. <laughs> One hit. Two hits. Stuart. Bad tank. Real bad tank. <laughs> well, he's got nothing on how bad the Stuart is. So keep my gun pointed towards when Stuart's going to come up. Enemy armor is destroyed. Shot in. He goes down. Kill one. So move up. Turning left, because the gun arc is more to the left. His shot bounces off my front armor. I aim where he's gonna be. Side. But he's not coming out to oh, I need to pull myself out a bit further for the forwards. And I keep that aim on where he's gonna be. He's gonna come out. At some point in order to shoot at me. I'm not sure which gun he's carrying, but should be alright from artillery here. Okay, he got covered up, been spotted. He's going to be forced to come out by our friendly tanks. Enemy armor okay. is damaged. Round into his side. It's a par damage roll, but hey, I'll take it. Keep this area suppressed. Covent is moving off. Okay, he is over the side of the hill. So I've got to advance. Covent goes down. Commentor was one of the tanks that the M3 was replacing. Commentor was a bad tank. Very bad tank. <laughs> so, we're all going around, turning left to bring his shot, bounces off the front of the armour. Aim there. <laughs> aim there. I have more than enough traverse speed to <laughs> get to whichever side I need to to and this Kaney what he should have done is he should have fallen back but he didn't he allowed himself to get surrounded he's not oh, artillery prepare and advance I stayed still too long, uh, I miss, but it takes me three seconds to reload, come out. I should oof, to the shell again. I chase him out into the open, straight into the Marlin's gun. Teamwork! <laughs> Surprisingly, it works. Uh, to the shell. I advance. Tilda goes down. So much for that uh, KV-1 level armor. Continue to advance. Can't see him. M3 Lee. Turn. Ugh, died before I could get a shot off. And from this point, I just go to the base capture point. So I'm going to switch to the next match because I just get to load capture points for the rest of this match.
So this match didn't go so well. But really it's just look at the lineup. Uh, look at all those tier six tanks. Okay, now that you've looked at all those tier six tanks, this is just what you can do in a tier six match, even if you're going to lose said match. <laughs> and um I'm quite happy what Lee can do in a tier 6 match. Let's get this show on the road. Mm. You've got AOL for fours, keep it fives, sixes, and the eight. Just take one five, hands of four, here you go. Okay. Stuff that is not particularly nice and can oh, one shot my lead quite easily. Okay, I take that and show you 20 degrees of gun elevation. But anyway, so I have for the tap. Now I'm firing the uh, 30B. Even being outpaced by a 30p. Just how last of the speed on this thing is. But it's not slow. Never get into your head that this machine is slow. So, there's an E8. Getting the shit shot. Penetration! And I'm coming up to put some fire into it. If you're thinking, oh, 517, why are you so silly? <laughs> Lee, no match for E8. Correct. But E8? <laughs> Not like shot from Lee. <laughs> E8 armor? Very bad. Okay, so we're supposed to going round the right way. I'm going round the left way. In order to maximize my innovation. So, all the enemy seems to be on the other side. No problem with the town. Excellent. Got this flank all to myself in P. So, advance. Okay, I'm going to push through in order to get some clean firing lines. So, a man up. Start moving. Oh, there's more stuff in the way. <laughs> and there's a real battle going on over the side. So, move up. Nope, still going. Oh, we died. I'd have loved to have got shot into the back of that Yak Panzer IV, but something shot me. I don't care. <laughs> So move up. Turn right when I can't be shot at. Move up. Try and use this gap and no, nope, can't see him. But I'll get him later. T twenty eight. No armor. Nice damn troll. Oh, coming for more. You just missed me. <laughs> Considering his gun has 0 0.3 something accuracy. Missing the Lee is not exactly something to boast about. And the Lee's gun's got 0 0.41 accuracy. <laughs> he should have hit me. No, dead. Enemy is hit. Move along. So I can provide support fire for our forward element. He's got their artillery in sights. Can they kill it? Oh, they are. Enemy is hit. Whack. 
Good hit. Um, shot again, desperately. Bounced. Run. <laughs> Predictable. And I'm going to allow you to watch the rest of this match because my teammates did a really good job in this match. They couldn't pull it through, but the artillery had balls. <laughs> I'll say that much. So that was the M3 Lee. <laughs> Great tank for its tear. Difficult to drive, but when you can drive it correctly, boy, can this thing pack a punch. You get some really good results out of this tank. And it's especially good for trolling tier 6 players who don't expect this tank to do any damage to them at all. And when you put a couple of rounds in them, they start taking you seriously. So that's it for this week's review. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing next week. It'll probably be a compilation of battles. Who knows? Who knows? I might have something else ready to review. <laughs> so I'm Boom Boom Five One Seven. If uh, this is your first time watching, please like and subscribe. Well, not a bad review for Remembrance Sunday. Quite appropriate. So I'm Boom Boom Five One Seven. Signing off.